very precious book and has been used by not just their family, but many people around, including our dear Master Ching Kong. And Liao Fan taught, what Liao Fan thought is also a foundation of Buddhism. A Buddhism does not come out of nowhere. It has to base on uh, proper, you know, um, cause and effect. You know, based on understanding of cause and effect, based on a proper um, used and practice of filial piety, of respect towards elders, something we learn from Tzu Kui. Those are the foundation of Buddhism. Those are the only way that Buddhism can thrive, especially Mahayana Buddhism. So, knowing cause and effect, knowing you know um, decency, you know as we learned from Master Xiao's class last time, Li, is very important to build up a foundation to receive something as grand as and as profound as Buddhism and use it instead of just studying it. Most important part of Liao Fan's sessions is acknowledging the past wrongdoing and do something to change it. So he acknowledged it straight away after listening from Master Yun Ko about why he can't have his children, why he can't go further than what he was calculated to be in his career. So he immediately picked out all his points, all his weakness, summarize it and give it to Venerable Yun Ko. Um, so he has humility and he regrets and he reform. So not just that, he actively give out to the communities, to the people around them and clean his heart. So that combined with persistence. So he acts on his, I mean, he, he, he aware of his not, uh, past, acknowledge it, he act on it and he persists on it. And that makes him successful. So one of the most important fault that he's found himself and we can also um, also understand is uh, his obsession with cleanliness. So while cleanliness is not a wrong thing, it's a good habit, um, it's more about his personality that he likes to keep himself, he keep his hands clean. Uh, he doesn't know how to get down and you know help people. You know, get dirty and help people. I mean, if it takes um, too much trouble, he will not do it. So looking back at ourselves, we might also have that part in us that we might not want to hesitate to help people even though we could because maybe we're in the middle of something. So this is also a test to us. So what he did wrote here is not just a story, but also a checklist for us. Like, have I done this? Have I done this? Have I also hesitant when I'm trying to do good? So you will see in chapter two um, that he has given us a more systematic ways to reform. How do we reform? Okay, so first chapter is talking about you can change your life. There's no way you can't. And Master Yunku has given a very in-depth teaching about how you change your life because people are becoming sane in the past. So I and him, I mean, that that saint, like Confucius, Mencius, they were like us, human beings, normal human beings with family, I mean, with, um, how to say, with the conditions maybe worse than ours. But they thrive in their adversities and they go through it and they become a sage. They overcome their own desires. They may get better out of it. So why can't we? Uh, that, and then the Alphine was getting motivated and he begins by telling us what where to start with, reform ourselves. So, last few weeks we have talked about um, the three ways of I uh, mean three attitudes of reforming. So, a person who willing to reform, they have these three character traits in them. First one, they're feeling ashamed. So, feeling ashamed is in this case is about human decency, li. So, what not to do, what to do. Um, you know, in the public, in, in private. Many people keep saying in public, but private also we have that sense of decency. We do not do that even if it's in private. So that that's the first step of building up our moral and virtues. Um, if we have that sense of feeling ashamed, we will not do something that will make ourselves, our family, our loved ones, our, you know, youth group, brothers and sisters feeling ashamed. So, 
We want to do a good job. We want to set up an example to others. So I will not do something that humiliates their name or humiliates their trust. So also he talks about um, how, you know, all the adversities and, um, what is it? Sorry, because I was looking at lowest point of one's life that changed the life. So not relevant, but it's a good point. So second part is fear. I mean, is is uh, way seeing fear, right? That fear comes out of respect, not comes out of you know fear of life. Um, fear of what? So first part is actually about moral, lonely. You know how you know you should treat elders respectfully. How you should um, harmoniously interact with your uh, surroundings, like your siblings, your um, colleagues. Second one is about cause and effect, which is what Tyson Guy been trying to say. But this one is a summary of it. So Wei Xing is talking about whatever you do, the truth will come out. So be honest. Be real to yourself. Don't try to be pretentious. Don't try to cover it up. You know, be 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 real as you could be. So that's the first point he point out already. Um, and one sincere thought of repentance, he even used a metaphor. It's like a candlelight shining in a dark cave for a thousand, that has not seen light for a thousand years. So that goes to the second point. No matter how long or how recent the wrongdoing is, we do have. And Bodhisattva Siti Gaba has, Dizang Wang Pusa, has already mentioned we all have that wrongdoing in the past. We definitely have that. And it was um, the reason why we're still here. You know, six realms. We still can't solve the four problems at that Renner Bush has informed us uh, about, you know, life, I mean, birth, death, illness, and age. Because of that, karma is not cleansed. So we can't reach that level where we can surpass it or overcome it. So right now, what do we do? We start by having that want to reform. Doesn't matter how long is that. All right. The point is we, we are willing to change. Keep into the game. Do not, do not go out. Just do not give up. Keep going. Now, he can he move on and say the life is fragile. Uh, we are very, um, how to say, we, I would, especially during current times with COVID and all that, um, we are literally one breath away from death. And, and, you know, in future, there are many more disasters we can understand because bushfire, COVID, that's not unrealistic to respect something more worse coming in. Obviously, we hope for better. So if you want to hope for better, cause and effect. If you want a better world, that's an effect. We need to have a good cause first. And the cause is the five precepts. And if you don't take opportunity now to, you know, practice, cultivate, you know, uh, uh, giving uh, precepts, uh, uh, holding precepts, understanding precepts, why cause, um, fortune to our family. Why, why it gives um, past fortune rather than disasters to my family and myself and my people around me. Uh, so, yes, I just bring out the point that uh, Leo Fan has mentioned in the end of this fear chapter. So, this, if we cultivate goodness, okay, if we avoid doing bad deeds, sounds easy, but to do it pure, you know, Purify your act, your speech, your action, so that none of your action, none of your thoughts, none of your speech emits unwholesomeness, emits anything that breaches the five precepts. No killing, uh, no stealing, no sexual misconduct, uh, no, no, um, no lying, and if you choose to help it, no drinking. So, no intoxicants in general. And th these are the rough points. If you can go finer and finer and finer, those things are just to tell you that there are ways for us to um, guide ourselves towards the acting, you know, speech and thought, thought karma of Buddha. So we align ourselves to what Buddha is doing because he has a, a perfected these three karmas so that he can liberate from this life and death. Or in the shorter terms, he can gain great fortune you know he, he can gain the karma of great fortune in health in wealth in 
name, fame, and everything. He didn't ask for it, but he got all of it. Um, that's something we all need right now. So those are the karmas that we need to learn. You know, giving of wealth, giving of wealth gains wealth, giving of uh, knowledge, especially if you're a teacher or if you're anything you know, including this session. If you give this, what you know about this, Delfan, or what you know about cooking, what you know about anything to others, you will gain the wisdom out of it. You will become smarter, basically. To be smart is to make others smart, to, to allow, enlighten others, to open up others' knowledge if the chance arise. And the third one is the giving of fearlessness. If they're feeling scared to walk in the street at night and you happen to be with them during, you know, before they depart, then if you can, you know, accompany them during that night trip back home. Or if they are, you know, about worried about something, fear about something, comfort them, sit them, listen to them. That's giving of fearlessness. And the karma is to have long life, longevity. So those are very down to earth stuff. If you want all this good stuff, wealth, you know, and you want, everyone wants wealth. Everyone wants long life. Everyone wants um, to be what smart. They don't want to be, a, you know, they don't want to feel stupid. They want to be smart. They want to be intelligent. They want to be, have wisdom. Then we have to start doing this. So fear is also fear of the contrary, you know, being, uh, being very uh, sting stringy, stingy, um, uh, yields the karma of poverty. Very fair. You don't give, you don't get. Um, the, you know, karma of the opposite one of, you know, uh, scaring people or causing people distressed unnecessarily, causing people, um, fear or make or put fear into other people in the wrong way. Um, I'm not talking about the parents educating children to respect the rules, respect the uh, uh, human beings. And that kind of fear is good because what I'm talking about is the fear, unnecessary fear, is the fear for their life, fear for their career. Uh, those those kind of uh, harm, all right? not education, a harm. Those fear will um, cause them a, a, a psychological trauma and all that. So if we do that, no matter how small the degree is, it will harm our longevity. And obviously, if we are stingy and preserving our knowledge and not letting other people know, even though we know 100% of this topic, we only give 80% for fear of competition or something like that, then we will yield a karma of ignorance or stupidity. Um, there's no other way about it. This is very raw, just like gravity. Those are iron rules, iron laws of karma. So the last one is the one we will, I'm going to delve in today, uh, hopefully as quick as I can, courage. So knowing these two, the re, um, you know, feeling ashamed, what to do, what not to do, uh, fear, you know, the consequences, or also understand the consequences means you also can turn it into opportunity for your, for a better life, for your better life. Now it's the courage. So the Alphan has talked about um, if you have to change your life, you need to have courage. Sorry, th this one is also mentioned. So swiftness is the key. You have to be quick. You have to stop it while as it arises. And and you know um, the next one is three ways of changing. So the courage itself talks about you need to um, strike while it's hot. Do not let it fester. So uh, when it just happened, when this you know unwholesome thought, anything that breaches the five precepts, just for your guideline, or anything that harms others. Um, and you will use that guideline as a, as a, as a, as a base, as a fallback point, like, is that harming others people, you know, the five precepts. And if, 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 you know, um, if we breach the guideline, um, we understand that my thought has already gone excessive, uh, leave the middle way. So I need to stop it. So in our case, we can use Amitofo. Or if you still can't use Amitofo to suppress it, just don't think about it. Change the topic. Basically, change with something good. Change with Amitofo. That's the best part. Or change with something wholesome. Think about how you you know serve your family or something like that. Good, good wholesome stuff. So that's for the thought, for the speech, for the action. Same speech, 
if you're about to you know sway or something try to hold it back it's hard i know because i myself have the same problem but um try to try to try to stop it at your tongue before you say it because this kind of thing have impact to other people for the rest of their life for some reason if you're in the position of uh, power as well or if you're in charge of something or if you're just giving an opinion just filter it before it comes out make sure it goes out right so the last one is um, action the act now before you do it think about it or if you're about to do it you, even though you, you know it's wrong because of your habits cut it off force yourself to go somewhere else so that you don't commit it so those are the courage have a courage to act on it and the last the second half of the chapter two is the three ways of changing last week the last fortnight uh, michael has presented by behavior by reasoning so we begin by behavior um, you know don't do it just like i say don't do it don't act on it just you know i um because in in the past if i uh how to say if i if i scold people i stop scolding people you know uh, if in the past if i commit killing karma like maybe butchering or something i, I stop killing it killing the animals or something those are very uh tedious very hard to do one by one because there are thousands of behavior that you might commit and thousands of them they have quite few that might be a bad karma how can you stop it so he went and say before you even start doing think uh, act on it you think about it you reason yourself uh, what's my belief what's my value um alex has mentioned last week say selfish or selfless you know those are the choice that we choose every day when we act so we think about our uh, we think based on our, what we believe what we <clears throat> value the best what we value as the good what we value as bad all right and another layer is what what's my personal motto and and then we have importance of listening to dharma because those reasoning everyone has their own set of reasoning but as we can see their reasoning not everyone can get out of the problem they were in and the main most fundamental problem is life and death not everyone can get out of it and the everyday problems getting along with people getting along or getting what you want not everyone can do it so obviously even though everyone can have their thinking and their set of reasoning and it's to be respected but it's not all not all of them works not all of them able to achieve results hence we need someone who already been through there already achieved all that you know longevity wealth family and all that good stuff to to give you a guideline hence the dharma to change our mindset so we need to have faith in that person because that person has gone through we call him buddha we can call him the all-knowing one the knowledgeable one but um he has been through there he has walked the path and he's giving us all this work for us to choose from that suits our circumstances so that we can uh, to change our path if not as perfect is if not as high as he was but gradually working up the way to the level he is so dhamma listening very important part of reasoning not reacting people being aggressive to you that's another very good point bring up by leo fan if people are very hostile hostile to you um you know in workplace especially sometimes it, you know or maybe they're just you know in the t- in the moment because everyone's stressful trying to get things done be patient don't react listen to them and uh, see if they're actually like that uh, if it's just spur of the moment it's easier to forgive if it's intentional malicious what's what does that have to do with you it's also a very important part we have to dis the compartment I dis- disengage from that just like defamation just like um scolding or something it's it's like they are holding the fire a, a torch you know, a fire torch to the air eventually it will exhaust by itself that's what they'll find employ if we do not react to it if we do react to it is like adding oil to it letting letting it you know full more and more and more or it's like wrapping yourself up like a like a cocoon silk cocoon wrapped in themselves and suffocate themselves do not try to defend yourself unnecessarily um 
only only clear it out for the benefit of the public. Like in the real case example, Master Ching Kong has always been defamed and I observe him. Um, sorry, thank you. Bye, Alex. So I observe him having the, how to say, uh, uh, issue of, how to say, not issue, uh, Master Ching always getting defamed all the time, but I saw him only clarify the points that will affect the whole of the Amitabha group, you know, the Jing Zhong group. Say he, he, he clarified, you know, like I did not ask for donations. I did not ask for your money to build a temple for me in China. I don't even go back there anymore. So something like that for the benefit for everyone. Yes. But if it's just for yourself and it doesn't really affect everyone else, then fine. Let it go because you don't need to bear that burden. And that person who committed karma will have to deal with it themselves. So that's that's all for the revision. Sorry for the long talk, but I figured out we have a system that we, we can probably appreciate. They'll find more. So the last one is by heart. Um, unfortunately, today Michael has uh, work and you know a surgeon. So I'll take over. I mean, I'll, I'll take over this part before I pass on the rest to Beverly. Today will extend to 10 minutes. Is that okay, guys? 10 minutes or 15 minutes past 12. Okay. So, silence is yes, then. Um, we'll, we'll start with the, 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 the three ways of changing. So, by reason, it's also good, but it's not thorough because everything we commit comes from our heart. And a heart has formed by many thoughts, but thoughts is not um, thought is not predictable because they are not real. They are they are like like an illusory bubble. It, they are like a bubble on top of a sea, keep changing nonstop, like a wave on top of a sea. Um, they do not exist. Uh, they exist, but very short, short while, and they never stay the same. So, this is the same as our thought. And try to reason with this kind of thing is very pain. It's very hard and tedious because they keep changing and changing and changing. Every time you wake up, it, you see it change again and again. Instead of chasing around this bubble, like oh, what I'm thinking, what's my mood today? You go to the depth of the ocean. And that's what I'm trying to say. Everything arises from this heart, just like the ocean that gives rise to thousands of bubbles thousands of thoughts and hence thousands of speech, thousands of action. So if we want to get the crux of it, then we can change everything else, right? So you have to get to the depth of the ocean. And that's what Levan has taught us. Um, everything, everything we have a bad habit on, say we are, we are, you know, we, we last fool or uh, we like fame, we like um, to enjoy indulging in, uh, in, in, in expensive stuff or, or unnecessary stuff, or we like to, you know, angry, we easily get angry. We do not need to one by one pick out, oh, what if I commit today? Yes, you have to be aware, but what's underneath it? What caused everything unwholesome or even wholesome to happen? You know, the, the thoughts, the idea of thoughts itself. So we do not need to one by one pick on it. We just need to have one heart to rule over them, which is, I want to be a good person. I want to change myself. I want to um, do good. If I have these issues, I go on the opposite of it. So use proper thoughts to overcome the evil thoughts. That's why we chant Amitofo. That's the whole point of it. One Amitofo, equal, uh, one Amitofo against everything else. Everything, your anger, your hatred, your greed, your everything, all the afflictions uh, that Master Shewu has talked about last time. One Amitabha to overcome everything. Mm. That's that's what everyone said. We are using Amitabha. So using one proper thought, as the proper thoughts comes out, all the evil thoughts, as long as you keep it there, they cannot attain to your mind. Just like the sun on in the mid air. When it shines, everything is 
illuminated. There's no, um, how to say, there's no, the shadow will not appear. I mean, if there's no obstacle. So we need to keep it clear in our mind. So this is how, when you know you are skillful in your cultivation, you don't need to go one by one, one by one, one by one. Uh, you don't need to, just like you cut the roots of a poisonous plant, you don't need to go by leaf, by branch, by trunk. Cut the root and it will die. It will wither. So, when it just happens in your mind, make it clean. Change it. So first thought comes out, second thought, change it. First thought comes out, second thought, change it. And then the rest of the game is to keep keep at it. Keep that, for us, Amitofo. Keep the Amitofo on and on and on. Do not let the rest come in. It's just like a defending game. You just you don't let anyone sit in. Um, yeah. However, we cannot ignore the importance of having reasoning, having a behavior changes because ultimately they are one thing. And Michael and I agree that we talked about that last time is, um, you know, those those kind of things is we break it down into three parts, four parts, five parts. It's just for us to have a have a have an understanding. But when it when it comes to real operation, we really act on it. It's actually one thing all in one package. You have to not only control your thoughts, you also need to reason with it because it will definitely come out of your net and it will expand. So you have to be, you know, aware what you're doing and tell yourself what's the consequences. And then your body behavior, you also need to direct it as well. Um, if you're not impulsive, it's easier. Sometimes if you're impulsive, this is a challenge. So, yeah. He just talk about the uh, people who changed in the past 20 years uh, when he's at 21 years old. So never stop the, the reforming. And if we can't find our own fault, that means that we are being callous. Because fault is the karma, the, is a cost. And the effect is a world that is imperfect. The world that has a lot of flaws. And this is the world that we are born into because of the karma that we are committed. So we might not commit a very heavy one. Hence, we're born into a better family, better <coughs> conditions <clears throat> over here. But we're still part of this world. And we're not here as a bodhisattva, as a normal being. Hence, we always have fault, that whether we are aware or not. That's why listening to Dharma is important to give you that pointer. Say, okay, I have this point I need to fix so that I can get better and better and better. And the result is currently you have elevated your lifestyle, your whole status and everything, wealth and everything. And in future, you have, you know, you will be able to go to Pure Land or overcome the life and death. Okay, so don't give up and keep, uh, you know, keep reforming.